guys and welcome back. Today we're doing another colour grading tutorial. Before we get started I just want to say this is my Instagram. If you want to go and follow it that would be awesome. Um, so it's Sebastian underscore JWB. I'll leave the link probably down below in the description as well. Also this is my brother's Instagram. Uh, his Instagram is Matthew underscore GKB. So go check his account out as well. Now I will say this video may not have the best audio quality. That's simply just because we're at university at the moment and I haven't got all of my recording equipment sorted out just yet. But today we're going to be doing a colour grading tutorial on a moody kind of colour grade. The first thing you want to do really is you want to make sure you take an image that is suitable. So for example, you want to make sure that the photo is quite dark in a wood, maybe a wooded area or a dark area. So for example, something like this wouldn't work. You can't really do a moody colour grade with that because it's too light. So we're going to be working with this image here today um, and we're going to be trying to make it have that faded look that you see in these nice moody color grades. So for example, what we're gonna be doing is sort of mimicking this kind of style where you've got browns uh, and greens and things like that uh, with a very faded whites and blacks. Now I'm not saying go out there and just copy a, an Instagrammer's uh, color grade. What I'm saying is what you can do is you can see what somebody's done for their uh, color grade and you can just lift ideas from that. Now the first thing you're going to want to do if you're uploading to Instagram, I always crop my photos to a 4x5 which then means I can post it as a portrait photo. Um, you may want to then scale it so the person is in the centre of this photo. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger but I want him to be pretty much in the centre of the image. Um, I also want enough room below his feet but I want to keep him at the bottom of the image so I'm going to crop it to that frame there. Now the first thing I'm going to mention is this photo was taken in RAW so you can see here the uh, temperature slider we can adjust the white balance in post. Now I will recommend if you have a camera that can take photos in RAW definitely do it because you can change and edit the photo a lot more than you can if you were just to do it in JPEG. Those of you who keep asking um, I failed to tell you in the last video this is camera we used for this was a Canon EOS M3 uh, and I used a vintage lens which was a Pentax SMC f1.7 lens. So for those of you who are interested, that's the camera I'm using. It's not a massively expensive camera but you can get some pretty good photos from it if you try. The first thing I'm going to do is bring up the shadows ever so slightly. Now I do want to keep the shadow, shadows kind of dark so I don't want to brighten it up too much. I'm then going to bring the highlights down to about minus 25 simply just because I want to uh, flatten this image and make sure that nothing's over or underexposed by too much. So one person who really does the moody colour grade quite well is Thirsty on Instagram. Now if you haven't checked him out, I definitely recommend uh, giving him a follow. But you can see his feed has very strong blues and greens. So we're going to kind of try and mimic this as best we can because you can see we've got a very similar blues and greens going on in our image. So if we take one of his photos, for example this one, you can see his shadows are still quite dark and his highlights aren't overexposed. So we are going to make sure that that is the same with ours by dropping the highlights and increasing the shadows just ever so slightly. Now his images are actually quite contrasty, um, so we are going to bring some contrast into the image as well. Not too much, probably around plus 20. Now you can mess around with the uh, temperature slider as you please. Um, I'm just going to make it a little bit more blue and then I'm going to make it ever so slightly uh, decrease the tint. Now if you do the backslash key you can see the before and also the after. We've not done too much yet um, but we will notice it more as we move on. Now as for the whites, bring those up slightly and bring the blacks down slightly as well. You can already see we're getting that very dark black shadows that we need to be getting. Now as for clarity you don't want to make it too high because if you've got your contrast up at plus 20 uh, the clarity also introduces quite a bit of contrast as well so I'm going to drop that down to about minus 15. Now the next most important part is the vibrance and saturation slider. Um, one thing you can do is you can arrange them like this or like this. I tend to increase the vibrance to about plus 25 something like that and then decrease the saturation by a fair amount down to maybe about minus 50, possibly minus 45, something like that. Because now that's probably enough so far for the basic slider. Uh, the next most important thing is the tone curve. Now if you don't have this button down here selected and you're on this tone curve, make sure you come down here and select this button. Um, I much prefer working with this tone curve than the other one simply because I feel like I've got more control. And all we're going to do is we're going to make a simple S curve and then add the fade in on this. So just pull up the highlights and then bring down the mid-tones ever so slightly and then you want to just fade out the highlights and you want to fade out the shadows just by pulling it back and up a bit. So you can see you can actually introduce 
quite a bit of fade in this image just because it is so dark. So the darker your image is, the more fade you can put in your image. Now this is all a matter of personal preference and how much fade you want. I personally like introducing a fair amount of fade, but you can see once I've done that, you then lose detail in the shadows. So you may then want to come back up to the basic slider and just open up the shadows a little bit more and possibly increase the uh, exposure as well. Okay, so, so far I am pretty pleased with this tone curve. I've had to be quite gradual. So the tone curve at the bottom has to be quite gradual in this image simply because it is so dark. Uh, we may be able to fix some of this later, but I'm just gonna leave that and we'll come back to it in a minute for any further adjustments. Now the next thing is the HSL slider. Um, if you come over and just click all, what we're gonna do is basically just adjust all of these colors to uh, our liking. Now, the reds, oranges, we're not really gonna have much effect other than the skin tone. And I don't really wanna mess that up too much because you can see you can have him looking really weird. So I would leave those alone if I was honest. You're really interested in the yellows, greens, aquas and blues in this sort of image. Um, now the yellows and greens will obviously affect the leaves and the blues will obviously affect his shirt and his shorts. Now, as for the yellow and green slider, it all depends on what colors you want in your image. Now, I like to Sometimes I like to make the greens a lot more uh, green um, simply because it's the main colour in this image. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the yellow slider down to about minus 10 and the green slider up a fair amount to about minus to about plus 50, plus 55, something like that. Now obviously this depends massively on your image and you may find these numbers are too high or too low for your image. But in the general direction, this is the sort of direction you want to go. Now as for the aquas and blues, it all depends if you want to go for that teal kind of green or if you want to make it a more purpley blue. I personally want to keep the blue as normal or as aqua as I can um, without it looking too green. So I'm just going to slide the aqua slider down to about minus 50, minus 40, something like that. And maybe bring the blues down to about bring the blues down to about minus one, something like that. So not an awful lot. So far, you can see if I turn off the HSL slider. Uh, and then turn it on, there's a very, very subtle change, but it does make the greens a lot more green. Now moving down to the saturation, you want to make sure that everything is quite desaturated. Maybe choose one colour that is not, um, it all depends on personal preference. But I'm personally just going to decrease the saturation of every single colour. So individually we can move the slider for the red and the orange, that's just going to bring down the skin tone ever so slightly, that's a little bit too low I think. You don't want him looking like he's um, the walking dead, you want to make sure he still looks alive, but still lightly desaturated. Um, as for the yellows, I'm going to bring those down, because you can see if I bring them up it just looks weird, so I'm going to bring those down, probably quite low to about minus 36, and then the greens I'm also going to bring down again to about minus 20, to about minus 20, maybe maybe even minus 35, something like that. Uh, the aquas, again, bring those down to about minus 35, and the blues down as well to about minus 29. So you can see already the image is becoming quite desaturated and moody like this. Um, you can see his, his greens and his whites and his blues are incredibly desaturated, much like this image here. Granted, this image is a lot brighter than ours, but we're not exactly copying his style. Uh, now, the purples and magentas aren't really going to do a lot. Purples may affect the blues ever so slightly, um, but I would just leave them where they are, obviously, unless you've got any purples in your image, you want to desaturate those. Now, as for the luminance, this is basically the brightness of each colour. Again, you don't want to mess around too much with the reds and oranges because that is the skin tone, um, and it can look weird if you overdo it in either direction. In this one, I think I'm going to make it slightly brighter, just simply because I think he is quite dark. Um, so I'm going to pull it up to about plus 44 and plus 31. So I'm going to bring the blues and the aquas down slightly because I think his shirt is slightly bright. Um, the good thing is he is the center of the image, he is the focus of the image, so it doesn't matter too much that his shirt is very well lit. Um, again, if I do the backslash key, you can see what the difference is before and after. Okay, so that's basically the HSL slider done. Now if I turn that off and then turn it on again, you can see it does neutralize and uh, flatten the image a little bit more. Uh, the HSL slider and the tone curve are probably the most important curves in any color grading you will do in Lightroom. So you can make sure you learn these quite well. Um, they're not too hard to learn, the tone curve you can do so much with and that really brings the image to life. Our next one is split toning. Um, this basically will introduce a colour that you select in a certain strength of saturation um, for the highlights or for the shadows. So what you can do if you press Alt um, or Option key on your Mac and move the slider you can see what colour is going to be introduced into the highlights. 
Now in this case, I'm probably going to do uh, about 184 and about 10% saturation, something like that. It's a very subtle change, you can't really see it. And as for the shadows, I'm going to make it sort of a greeny blue if I can, maybe around 170, possibly 196. Bring the saturation of the shadows up maybe to about plus 7. I will then head back to the uh, HSL slider and just increase the red saturation again and the orange saturation just because it has got rid of some of the skin tone uh, in the split turning curve. Now as for detail, you really don't need to mess around with this at all unless your image has got lots of noise and in that case put in noise reduction. Um, but in this image I'm just going to leave the sharpening at 25% and then move on from that. I think that's perfectly fine. As for lens corrections, again, really you don't need to do this. But if you've got a weird distorted view, you want to come into enable profile corrections, you want to find your camera, select the lens and it may or may not correct certain amount of warping. You can see it does something slightly in this image. The next thing is vignetting. Um, personally, I don't like doing too much vignetting. As for this image, however, I think it's quite nice to introduce some vignetting. Um, so I'll bring it down to about minus 25 and up to about 77, maybe even 100% feather. It's a very subtle um, amount of vignetting, but personally, I think it helps focus on the center of the image. If we don't have it on, our eyes can be distracted and brought up to the lighter parts of the image here and here. So I'm gonna put that on um, and have the feathering up to 100%. Now, camera calibration, again, you can mess around with. You can make the blues more green, you can make the reds um, more brown. So for example, if we did the curve like this, we're gonna get a teal and orange look. If you haven't watched our last tutorial, um, we cover that in more detail. But one thing you can do is just come in and adjust it if you want to introduce more greens, which I think I'm going to do. So I'm just going to bring that up to about 13, 18, and then I'm going to decrease the saturation on that. As for the red primary, I'm probably going to leave it alone. I don't want to mess around with that too much. Green primary, I'm probably going to leave that as well. Maybe I'll bring it up ever so slightly and drop the saturation again. Um, and then, so you can see if I turn the camera calibration off, and then I turn it back on again, it just has that last little touch of increasing the greens. So if I make this full screen. See this is the final image. I'm not really sure what's going on up here with the image. I'm not really sure what's happening up here but this is basically what the final image looks like. Can do. Uh, so if we just look at the before by pressing the backslash key and the after it really does have a dramatic change to your image. Um, then you could do something for example I think the face, his face I think is a little bit too dark so I'm just going to click on the radial tool here um, and I'm going to click and draw and then just drag a circle over his face. Scroll down, click on Invert Masks, it will make sure we're only selecting the area inside the circle. And I'm literally just going to bring up the shadows, so maybe bring up the highlights as well, possibly the exposure. One thing you definitely should do if you're happy with your colour grade is come over to Presets here, and you just want to call it Moody Colour Grade. Make sure all of the right things are selected down here, and then you just want to click on Create. Um, one thing I will mention when you do that, be careful of creating it with your basic slider uh, exposures sorted because obviously for each image you are going to need to adjust the exposures uh, because it may be lighter or darker. This is another image I took the other day, um, a slightly different image and this preset may or may not work for this image simply because we've got uh, very bright highlights and very dark shadows and it may not be able to cope. So we're going to click on the colour grade we've just made and it'll probably make it very green and we may need to adjust that. Okay so this is the colour grade, you can see it has made the picture incredibly green and um, it's actually quite a horrible looking green um, and I have a feeling that's mainly just because of the split toning. So we're going to come in, we're just going to adjust the image so I'm going to crop it about there um, and then I'm going to t come into split toning. If we turn off split toning, you can see already it does begin to sort it out slightly. I think the aquas are probably a bit too low. And you can basically just come in and adjust each part of the image. Maybe you can add a bit more fade to the image if you want. Um, something like that. Then you can change obviously the white balance. If you think there's too much green, put up the magenta slider just to pull out some of that green. Uh, one thing that does look nice if you do have moody images is to go onto the gradient tool and literally just pull it over your highlights um, and you overblow your highlights. Uh, sometimes it does look quite cool and then if you desaturate them as well. This is a very rough colour grade for this image um, but this does prove that once you've made a preset it doesn't take much longer to then 
color grade your images. Uh, all you need to do is create a preset, take your photo and then select the image that you are going to color grade and just select your preset and there you go, your image is basically color graded. All you need to do is make a couple of minor changes at the end. Okay, so that's it guys. I hope you did enjoy this video. I hope this gave you an idea of how you can color grade your photos in a moody style. Um, but if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to leave comments down below of any more color grades you want to see uh, and any other tutorials. Uh, but I'm going to cut this, guys. I will see you in the next video. Live long and prosper.